Hey guys, welcome to another video. Tonight I'm going to show you how to do the perfect granny square. So you may have noticed that um, if you're new to crochet and you've got your granny square down, that as you go up row by row, um, the bigger your granny gets or the more it grows, the more it kind of shifts or tilts or swirls to the one side almost in a clockwise motion. Um, so I'm here to show you how to avoid that spin on your granny square. Um, I'm going to have all of the colors I'm using down in the description box. Um, I'll tell you what they are as I go along here, but I'll have them all written out for you guys just so you know. Um, tonight I'm using Bravo Worsted by We Crochet. It's a number four yarn and it's recommended hook size is a five millimeter. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's get started. You are going to start with your basic slip knot. Okay, if yours doesn't look like mine, don't worry. <laughs> we all do them differently. I think there's a million different ways to make a slip knot. So we're going to start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to slip stitch into this first chain over here. Okay, we're going to slip stitch together to form a ring. So there's your ring, and that's what we're going to be working down into. So we're going to chain two, one, two, yarn over, and work two double crochets into the center of that ring. Like so. Okay, and then we're going to chain two for our corner, and then we're going to work three double crochets into that center of the ring. One, two, three. Chain two more for your next corner and work three double crochets into the center. Don't be afraid to pull them back. If you start to run out of room, don't worry. You can manipulate them, pull them back. You're not going to ruin it. You can stretch and move it around, shift it around, make room for the last three stitches here, okay? Um, so we're going to chain two more for our next corner. Yarn over and do three more double crochets into the center of that ring. Okay, and I'm going to chain two. Now, this is where mine differs a little bit from everyone else. Instead of chaining three to start, which is what most people do when they're working double crochets, I only chain two. And the reason I do that is because now when I join my corner to complete this round, I'm actually gonna join into my first double crochet stitch instead of my chain. When I do that, it avoids the pulling and gaping that you sometimes see at the top of your chains because they're not actual stitches. So sometimes it just leaves this gapy, open, weird look going on and I find it's a little more coherent. I don't know, lays nicer, lays flatter, looks cleaner. So I always go into the top of that first official double cro crochet stitch, sorry, and I slip stitch together. Okay, and look at that. It creates that nice flat join. Okay, and then we're going to finish off this color here. So you're going to cut your yarn. Leave a couple inches because I'm also going to show you how to deal with your ends. Because that's one of the things with granny squares. We have lots of ends, right? What do we do with all of the ends? Well, this one here I worked over when I went around and I'm just going to cut it right off. Okay, so this one's done. You don't have to worry about that one anymore. This one up here though, instead of sewing it in, because I find it's annoying to try and, you know, start and stop and have to pick up a needle all the time. So I like to work my tail into the stitches, the back loops of the stitches when I go along. And that greatly reduces the amount of sewing I have to do at the end of my square. So I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop and I'm just going to pull it through. Okay, and I'm going to do that 
all the way around the corner here. I just do it in three or four stitches just till I get around the corner. And then I'm gonna flip my granny over and I'm gonna go into that back loop again, which is now your front loop because you flipped your granny. And we're just gonna go back the way we came. Okay, one, two, and three till we get a, through that corner, okay? So I'm not gonna cut this tail off just yet. I'm going to wait until I've worked over it to lock it down, but that one will now be finished, okay? And you have that nice clean join, you can almost hardly tell. Okay, so we have the front of our granny square facing us. See the stitches are nice and puffy. I'm going to flip it so that the back is facing me. I'm going to insert my hook into any corner you like and join your next color. Oh, I did mention I was gonna tell you what colors I was using. So this one here was Cotton Candy. So this one's Cotton Candy Brava from We Crochet. And my next color I'm joining is Seashell. So I'm going to place my yarn over the hook, like so. Leave a little bit of a tail, okay? Hold on to both of those loops. Pull it through your corner, okay? You're gonna yarn over both of the tails on the hook, pull through, and that's your join, okay? That's gonna count as your first slip stitch, or sorry, your first chain slip stitch. It's your first chain. Drop your tail and chain one more, okay? So that joining one was your first, and this next one here was your second. And we're gonna work two double crochets, chain two, three double crochets into this corner to start our round. Chain two, and then three double crochets, and this will complete our corner here. Now I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna work into this next corner without chaining anything between my clusters, okay? I'm just gonna yarn over and insert my hook into the next corner and I'm going to do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. I have a big massive yarn attacking me here. <laughs> Yarn over, insert into the next corner. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Oops. Same thing in the next corner, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Okay, so it's just like your, your standard granny square. The only thing that's changed is, I mean, the way I join them, it's a little bit different, but I mean, everybody does it differently pretty well. And we flip. So flipping is the key to getting that perfectly square, stays square, granny square, okay? Now we've come to the end. So we've got our chain two here. And I don't use that. I go into the top of the first double crochet, crochet stitch. Man, that's a mouthful. And you just slip stitch, join it together there, okay? Pull tight. So that's the beginning of your square, okay? Now we worked this over this one so we can cut this off. Deal with that right away. Unfortunately, with granny squares, I just, there's, you always have one tail to sew in, and that's this one, the one you started with. So I'll sew that into the back when I'm done, my granny. This one here, though, I'm going to work into my stitches, into the back loop of my stitches. Three or four, five six, however, <laughs> however many you want to do. It doesn't matter. Okay, so that's done. So I've got the front of my seashell round facing me. I'm going to flip it 
So the back is facing me now, and I'm going to work with the back facing me, okay? And don't worry about which corner you start in. You don't have to, if you finished in this corner, you don't have to start in that corner. You can start wherever you want. So the next color I'm using is Custard. Custard, Brava We Crochet in the color Custard. Again, I'm just gonna throw it over my hook, pull through, yarn over, grab both of those tails, drop one, chain one. Okay, so you've got your chain one, two. And we're gonna work a corner as per usual, chain two, three double crochets, yarn over and we're going to work into this next hole here into our space three double crochets like so and then into our next corner three double crochets chain two three double crochets and you can chain however many you like in the corners um, really the only difference is how holy or gapey you want your granny square. I don't know how you would describe it, but the size of the holes in your granny square will depend on how many chains you use in your corners and whether or not you chain in between your clusters on the sides of your granny square. So I don't chain anything on the sides of my granny square because I like my granny squares to be a little tighter um, I like to use them as actual blankets and I don't like my toes poking through. <laughs> so I tend to do no chains in between my clusters on the sides. And I find that two chains in my corners are a happy medium. Although I know a lot of people that use just one chain. And I know people that do three. I mean, I do three when I'm doing like sunburst granny squares and stuff like that. So it just depends. Play around with it, experiment, and see how you like it. See what works for you. We make our own rules in crochet. And whatever works for you, that's what you gotta do. So I'm just making my way around here. Okay, and I'm going to join to the top of that double crochet stitch, like so. And then I'm going to fasten off this color. Now I can get rid of this tail because this was the tail that I worked into the back loops. This one though, I forgot to sew this in. So I'm going to show you how I sew in my ends on a granny square. I'm going to Go over that first loop here, okay, and I'm just going to weave it back and forth in this corner, I don't know, three or four times, okay. Make sure that you're splitting the yarn or going into like the next loop because otherwise you'll just end up pulling it back and forth, pulling it out on yourself. But if you weave it in back and forth, it will lock it. it quote unquote locks it into place and then you don't you really don't have to worry your blanket will become bomb proof you'll never have to worry about all your hard work coming undone which is what we like okay so now that that's dealt with and I always 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 do my tails and my ends as I go so many people ask me on Instagram and on here and I've even had someone on Etsy message me saying oh my gosh granny squares there's so many ends how do you deal with your ends well this is how I do them as I go thank me later I know it's hard when you're in a groove you don't want to stop and or sometimes you're traveling you're on the go and like it's a pain to bring a darning needle and have to keep track of it right or in my case like I don't want to leave it lying around when I've got my four-year-old and my 
year and a half year old running around. That's all I need. So I'm going to lose an eye or try and eat it. <laughs> My one kid eats everything. Okay. So this is the front of my yellow round. We're going to flip it and we're going to add our next color. What is our next color? Alfalfa. So we're going to join, drop the tail, chain one, two double crochets, chain two, three, double crochets, And just work across putting three double crochets in every space between your granny clusters here I think by now you probably get the drift All right we just flip every round and by the end of it you will have a perfectly square beautiful granny square some people don't like to flip them. I mean, gosh, even I don't sometimes. But if I'm making a gift for someone, I definitely always flip because I like to have that perfectly square. Granny square. I don't want it to have any twisting or whatever. If I'm going to give it as a gift, it's got to be perfect, right? And really, granny squares, when you think about it, are the only granny stitch that we do without flipping. If you're making a granny triangle, you flip every round or every row. If you're doing granny stripe, you flip every round. Um, same with the zigzag. So, it's funny that there's sometimes no flipping with granny squares when it makes such a lovely square especially useful if you're doing like a solid giant granny square blanket like if you're just doing one giant one um, this will greatly improve the look of those because the more rounds your granny square has the more likely it is to twist on you. But if you're doing like a four round granny square, it's not as noticeable. Okay, so we've completed that round. Look at how perfectly square that is, guys, right? Isn't that nice? So I think I'll just do one more round, kind of like your standard five round granny. I think that's, you know, what most of us do on average. Okay, I can cut this yellow one off because I worked over it. Sew this last one in. Love it when the yarn comes. Okay, last round. So this is the front stitches, right? They look, and when you flip it over, they kind of look a little wonky or zigzaggy or whatever. That's how you know you're working on the back side or the quote unquote wrong side of your work. Is there a wrong side to crochet? I don't know. Okay, so this next color is Tranquil. good color. So two double crochets, chain two, three double crochets in that corner, <laughs> 
see the little yarn barf that's creeping up on me. Get over there. I always fold my work over when I'm doing it. Gets gives me more purchase. It's funny how everybody everybody crochets differently, you know? Like some people knife hold, some people pencil hold. But we all hold our yarn a little bit different. You know? And some people even like grab their yarn from like the front and come through. Oh, I've seen that before. That's trippy. Here comes the yarn barf. <laughs> Creeping up on us again. hope that you cannot hear my wrists cracking during this tutorial. Sometimes I play them back just to make sure I didn't say something completely ridiculous because um, this is all off the cuff. I don't plan these tutorials. It's all just, you know, whatever comes to my brain, as you've probably noticed from my ramblings. <laughs> so um, yeah, sometimes I hear the strangest things with my husband walking around upstairs. Okay, so we're gonna join to that top double cro crochet stitch there. I just can't seem to say that here tonight. Finish that off. All right, and we can cut this one off. Now, now, see, with this last, okay, so if I were doing my blanket and this were my last round, um, I actually don't work this tail into my stitches over here um, as my joining, because this is kind of like my joining round, right? So what I do to kind of kill two birds with one stone is I thread my needle, flip my granny, and I'm going to go into... I don't know if you can see it, kind of like this stitch right here, right beside it, going to the back of it. Oops. And I'm gonna weave it down the back and then through here to my other tail. Okay, pull it tight, but not too tight. You don't want there to be like a noticeable indent. And then I'm gonna take this tail thread it through and I'm going to do them at the same time. Love that, right? And let's do one more. One more just for kicks. There we go. Then you can cut that off. So there you have it, guys. I'm gonna stretch out your corners here so it's beautiful. There you are! You just made a perfect granny square. Congratulations! I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Bye guys!